President, please be seated. The chamber is now back in session. And we give the floor to the co-prosecutors to put more questions to the expert. You may now proceed. Good afternoon, sir. Um, when we left off, we were discussing Khmer Rouge policies towards or, the Cham during the DK period. So I want to continue with talking to you about the DK period and the policies of the regime. You've mentioned restrictions on prayer and mosques and the uh, Qurans beginning in 1973, and that this continued during the regime. How about the way that Cham people dressed? Was, that, uh, was there a policy of the regime towards the dress of Cham people? The Cham people have a different clothes style from other ethnic groups. For example, men had his own distinctive clothes and, and hat. For women, wear long clothes and according to the tradition, their hair need to be covered with head scarf and cannot reveal the hair. Outside. By the way, the, the headgear that males, male cham wear, traditionally is it one color? Is there a particular color? For what the men wear. Colors can be in different colors. But for the cap, can be in either black or white, but this is for men. But for headscarf for women, it can be in different color, depending on individual's preference. During the regime, were, uh, did any Cham people change their names, the names that they use? And if so, can you explain why? But uh, yes, there were changes in names because the name in Cham language it, uh, had Cham characteristics. That's why the Khmer Rouge required them to change their names to Khmer names. And regarding the name of the, the, the name change, it took place not only to the Cham people, but also to the Khmer people, especially those who were educated or uh, intellectuals. They needed to change their name from usually long names to short names. But for the name change for the Cham people, it means it results in the loss of their identity because their name in Cham language uh, signify their identities. I think we all are aware of certain dietary restrictions under Islam. Were there changes imposed by the policy of the DK regime on the foods that Cham people could eat or were required to eat? Based on religious 
regulation jam people had to eat certain types of food and not eat certain types of food. For example, pork. Meat from dog, from frog or snake are banned. And the most prohibitive food is pork. They cannot even touch the pork. At that time, the Khmer Rouge forced the Cham people to eat especially pork. For Khmer people, pork is a normal food that they consumed every day. The Khmer Rouge was well aware that the Cham people did not eat pork, but they forced the Cham people to eat pork. Although during the Khmer Rouge regime, there were not enough meat to feed people, but still the Khmer Rouge people make sure that they had they had pork and forced the Cham people to eat pork. Thank you. Um, there's one document on the case file that is E3-178. And I just want to ask you about um, a sentence in, there, in this. This is a internal document from the regime. The Khmer URN is 00275588. In French, it is 00623305. And in English, it is 00. And the document states that the 17 April elements from Phnom Penh, who were Cham nationals, conducted a protest in the common kitchen of the cooperative concerning their belief in what they eat according to their religion by pointing at and referring to Article 10 of the Constitution. The report goes on to say, for this situation, we have taken special measures, that is, look for their string, look for the head of their movement, in order to sweep clean. I believe, sir, this is a document cited in your, your book is that correct? Yes, I can still remember that I referred to this document in my book. And uh, to your knowledge, what happened to those Cham people who insisted on following the dietary restrictions of their religion or otherwise practicing their religion. Those who refused Khmer Rouge policies, what happened to them? Based on my research, I did not go deep in to how the documents were used, what measures were taken regarding those who resisted the, the, the food. But most of my interviewees, when talking about the food during the regime, they said that they were forced to eat pork and to raise pigs. And if they dare to refuse, they would be killed. And there were cases which there were cases when people when the Cham people uh, refused and those people were taken away and killed. Thank you. I'd like to read to you again from uh, Kiernan's book, E3-1593. It's page 461 in English, the French, 
ERN is 00 63 It's page 540 in French. And it talks about the results of interviews with Cham that he did. He says, when asked whether Muslim Chams had been forced to eat pork, 41 interviewees said yes, and only six said no. Similarly, when asked whether use of the Cham language had been prohibited by the DK authorities, 36 said yes, and only one said no. When asked whether Cham population had been displaced or broken up, 51 interviewees said yes, and none said no. Sir, how do the results of Kiernan's interview uh, correlate with those that you have spoken to regarding, excuse me, regarding the use of the Cham language being prohibited, required to eat pork, and the Cham being displaced. Let's take it, let me try to simplify and take it one at a time to make it simpler. Does that sound, does Kiernan's results correlate to uh, what were your results? He says out of 41 he spoke to about eating pork, all but six, that is 35 said they were required, and only six said no. I do not object what Ben Kennan found in his book, but for those six people who said that they were not forced to eat pork, I think this case may occur. But if we talk about the majority, what happened overall, uh, the majority were forced to eat, pig, to eat pork and to stop speaking Cham language. For the exceptional case that, have, that, that, that may have happened, it may have happened in very remote area at the place where the local authority, the village chief or commune chief, may have understood about, about the tradition of the charm. So it may have depended on the local chiefs who may have love or feel sympathy for the Cham people that they may let the Cham people to carry on their traditional practices. As I said, but for the majority, they were displaced, they were forced to eat pork and to stop speaking Cham language. At that time, based on your research, were there some Cham people that didn't speak Khmer? Yes, there were especially among elder people who did not come into frequent contact with Khmer people and who did not travel far from the village, who spent most of their time with their community. So, of course, there were some people in the community who who could speak some Khmer language, Dans la communauté, il y avait des but at a, a, a very limited uh, way. But for young Cham people, they could speak Khmer well. Les jeunes Cham pouvaient, quant à eux, Prior to the DK period, how was the Avant written Cham language taught to young people? And did that continue during the DK period? What happened during DK? Not 
no at that time there were no schools there were no teachers and students to study religion okay just problem was my question was complicated before the DK, who would teach the language? But, uh, Thank you for your question. Before the democratic Cambodia regime, there were not any problem for the Cham people regarding the learning and teaching of Cham language and the learning and teaching of Cham history. There were, before the democratic Cambodia regime, there were no suppression on these aspects. In Sankum Rihnijum, there were not any suppression on the Cham people. The Cham people had full rights and freedoms to learn their language and history. Now, we all know that the regime lasted less than four years, but from your research, has there been any effect upon the Cham language and upon young people's ability to read and write in Cham language from the DK period? But uh, as I told you earlier, during the K regime, the religious belief and practices were abolished, and the Cham people were forced to eat pork and to speak Khmer language. So there were some young people who were born in 1979 or after 1979, they could not speak Cham language. And even I, myself, also uh, had some problem in speaking my language because after uh, I spent more than three years in the regime, I, I, I lost my memory of some of my languages. Thank you. Now I'm going to move to a different topic that we discussed a bit this morning from the President's questions, and that is Cham resistance to DK policies. First, you mentioned, you, you've talked in some detail about what happened in Kopal and Sveiklang, but you mentioned that there also was some resistance in Treya. Can you briefly explain to us what happened in Treya in 1973? Based on the accounts of the witnesses, who participated in the rebellious activities in Trier village in 1973, the Khmer Rus made an arrest of one person in Trier village. And the uh, villagers were aware of the intention to arrest, so they were fleeing. And the Khmer Rus actually fired at them and later on, the uh, Khmer Rouge force, who actually went there uh, to uh, make an arrest, withdrew. And then a group of Cham people came to the uh, commune office to the east of the Trier village to uh, protest against the arrest of uh, that uh, villager. And they asked for the reasons for the arrest, and they uh, begged them to stop uh, engaging in the arrest. The Khmer did not respond to that appeal. And as a result, uh, the protesters were angry, and then they burnt an office. It was a, a commerce office and not the commune office.
Then they returned to their village. As a result, Khmerus retaliated by sending a group of soldiers to arrest those who involved in the burning down of the office and those who involved in the protest. Some were arrested and some fled as they had to swim uh, across the river to Kampung Cham, provincial town. And that was the uh, first uh, rebellious activity that happened in 1973 in Trier village. Thank you. Now you just talked about that as the first rebellious activity, and of course the name of your book is Cham Rebellion. I want to ask you a bit about the use of that, to what the goals of those engaged in this rebellion, as you call it, were. Were they seeking, did they have a plan from your research to overthrow the regime, to capture Phnom Penh? The purpose of the rebellion was to uh, seek freedom, the freedom to practicing their religious belief and to preserve their tradition. That was the demand, and it was the demand for freedom and not with the intention to overthrow the democratic Kampuche regime. In, let's stick to Kopal and Sva Klein in 1975. In either of these rebellions, can you tell us what kind of weapons those who were resisting the regime possessed? Did they have artillery, machine guns? What kind of weapons did they have? For the rebellions, that is for uh, the, the Cham people, they had bare hands, they did not have any uh, weapons. They resisted uh, the killing by the Khmer Rus uh, with Knives, swords, and uh, stones, except in Swai Kliang village, where they actually seized uh, two guns from the Khmer Rouge side and they used it to counter the attack by the Khmer Rouge. In other events, that is in Tri and Kopal, they did not have any uh, guns. Now you talked about what happened in Kopal and that the island was shelled by DK forces. Prior to the shelling of the island, had those resisting, those rebelling killed any cadre in Kopal? Please uh, repeat your question. In Kopal, you talked about, uh, explained what happened, that there was a prayer, that there was a meeting held by cadre, and eventually one of the cham stood up and made the call to prayer. People walked out, and there was a bit of chaos. Later, you said, a few days later, I believe, you said that the island was shelled by DK forces. My question is before the DK forces fired artillery on the island, had the people of the island killed any cadre? Through my recollection, there is no witness who said he or she involved in the killing or witnessed the killing of any Khmer Rouge cadre. It was the villagers who had the thoughts 
Uh, they were the one who were the, the victims des, of the Khmer Rouge shooting. Now, in your book, again, the Cham Rebellion, E3-2653, you in the, have various accounts of what happened on Svei Klang, and one or two accounts, including that of a witness named Man Zain, said that someone named Talib stabbed and killed a cadre named Chet before DK forces attacked Svei Klang. To your recollection, were there any other killings before the military attack on Svei Klang by DK forces? I'm not talking about any one who died during the attack on either side. I'm just talking about before the attack. If you ask about the events that are unfolded in Svai Klang, uh, si that is correct. As a Khmer Rouge country by the name of Chan was killed at Svai Klang, but not at Kopal. The Khmer Rouge cadre was killed at night when the rebellious force uh, chased him and his uh, group away from the village. At that time, Chan and his crew were conducting the arrest of the villagers in the village. So at the outskirts of the village, the villagers uh, caught up with them and then Chan, the Khmer Rouge cadre, was stabbed to death. Next morning, the Khmer Rouge sent their forces to suppress the, the villagers. However, nothing happened during the night that is after the stepping death of that Khmer Rouge cadre. Les villageois mais rien ne s'est passé pendant la nuit après que ce cadre Khmer Rouge a été poignardé. Thank you. Now, talking to those who were involved in these rebellions, did they have contact with outside forces? Were there outsiders from other countries instigating them or in contact with them from what they've told you? No, there was uh, none. No. The, those who were involved in the re rebellion were the villagers themselves. Even the, when the rebellion took place at Cop Hall, those young people living in other areas, for example in uh, Swai Klien, was not were not aware of uh, that uh, rebellion. So there was no coordinated uh, rebellions ah, si, that uh, took place uh, here or there. Si ici, For example, there was a rebellion exemple, at Zwei Klang and it initiated by a group of youth who resisted the arrest of their uncles and aunts. So they formed this group to resist uh, the, the acts of the arrest and later on they were joined by the rest of the uh, villagers. And there was no outside intervention or any uh, support, material support from uh, outsiders. Thank you. Uh, sir, when you've you conducted your Question. research, Je these interviews, over what years? Can you tell us approximately the years that you interviewed people about uh, the resistance of Cham people during the DK regime? It is difficult for me to state uh, which year. After I first published my uh, book, 
that is in 2002, I started my research on the uh, rebellion by the Cham people. And in order to respond precisely to your questions, I need to refer uh, to uh, my actually record of how many uh, interviews that I did per year. That's okay. Thank you. I think you've helped us because you indicated you started in 2002 and the book was published in 2006. So my question is, during um, la question que the interviews, proposer, the conversations that you've had with Cham people, Cham. are people reluctant to say that they were part of a resistance, of a resistance to the Khmer Rouge in the Cham community? Is that viewed as something shameful or is it Cham. viewed as something to be proud of or anything else? Can you explain? Est-ce une source de fierté ou de honte? They were happy and they were cooperative with my research. Ils étaient heureux de collaborer and avec they uh, were proud of Ils my research as uh, they saw that I compiled about the history of what happened to them. And the un interviews de were de connected both in Khmer and the Cham uh, languages. En Khmer, en and Cham. when I spoke to them, I used uh, my Cham language. Quand je parle avec eux, je parle Thank en you. Langue Cham. My question is a little bit different. Let me try to explain it Ma question again portait sur autre chose. Um, more precisely. Within the Cham community, Au sein de la are those Cham. who resisted the Khmer Rouge viewed as heroes? Les gens or viewed qui as ont résisté people that brought shame comme on the community? Héros, ou plutôt How are they viewed? Ont... Fait honte à leur communauté? Comment les considère-t-on? For those who lived in Swai Kliang and Kapal villages, eh bien, dans le cas no, de one, ceux qui à no one at all blamed uh, those who took part in the rebellion. Le blâme sur ces Everyone qui ont involved in the rebellion, à including the women, Tous ceux qui ont aux révoltes, they took les part femmes, in the form of a transporting ont, logistics, ont in digging pits to bury the dead bodies, uh, for instance. En des fosses pour they les took corps, part par in bandaging uh, the, the wounded. Soigner les blessés. Here I refer to uh, villagers in Swai Kliang and Kopal. Des, des and, and as for the uh, Cham people who lived in other villages or in other areas, they villages, never uh, put a blame endroits, on the Cham people in these two uh, villages at all. Les no. villageois de ces deux villages, pas du tout. Because the arrest and the killing took place prior Car to the rebellions. Les arrestations ont eu lieu they even avant said that if the two villages were to uh, rebel, si and if they knew in advance, they would actually si rebel su à as well. Que ces deux villages allaient se révolter, ils fait Thank aussi. you. Now, sir, there's something, a uh, question Merci. I have, and it's not in your book, so I have no idea how you will answer pas it. Dans votre livre, but my understanding is that, at least in the Arabic language, there's a special, special word for those who die il y a un um, mot fighting particulier for their religion. Is there such a word used among the Cham community? Existe-t-il une telle expression en langue Cham? We use one word, uh, un Zabilila. Zabilila. And according to its uh, meaning in the Islamic religion, if there is a restriction or a suppression on religion, religion and a person de is willing to sacrifice himself or herself for se religion, pour la religion, that person would receive the blessing from Allah and would go to heaven. Et ira au now you mentioned that after these rebellions, Question. The people in those um, Vous avez dit les villages les were displaced, moved to other areas. Is that correct? 
Est-ce bien le cas Yes, that is correct. Question. Can you briefly explain where they were sent? Were they sent together oui, or dire, separated? Ces gens ont été and envoyés, euh, how their logs were été, in these new locations? Comment ont-ils été envoyés? Ont-ils été séparés? Pouvez-vous nous décrire leurs conditions de vie à ces nouveaux endroits no. où ils ont été transférés? Réponse. About a month after the rebellion, environ the Chan un people who lived in other villages who did not take part in the, the rebellion were called for meetings. Ont été convoqués à des réunions. And the Chan people were threatened, were intimidated. Et les and they were instructed to forfeit uh, their religion and to follow the line of the party. Secondly, they had to be relocated away from Deuxième their point, native villages. Ces personnes allaient être transférées loin de leur village. And as I have stated uh, uh, comme je dit earlier, tôt, in Kapal, they were Relocated immediately, ils ont été and in Cyclean, they were detained for two months before they were relocated. Avant avant and then uh, the Cham people who lived in other villages Ensuite, were relocated in about at the same time. And that happened in around November 1975. Were relocated from their community and were, they were dispersed into various areas. They were sent to new locations and they were dispersed into various villages. For example, two or three families were placed in one village while a a few other families were placed in another village. And they would not be given any houses to stay in. They et, had to live under the house of the Khmer families in those villages. La maison de famille so, Khmer about two or three Cham families were Donc, placed in each village. And by that time, the Cham community no longer existed. Il avait plus existed de and they could Cham. no longer attend to pray together. Plus as they were dispersed uh, at the instructions. En effet, Ils ont été what were the conditions of life Question. in these areas les um, that would affect survival of those sent to these areas? Un effet sur la survie ou la capacité de survie des gens qui avaient été transférés. When they were relocated to Réponse. new areas. The first thing for them is that they lost their sense of community. And it would be easier for, for them to be supervised. Then they could be monitored whether they continue to speak their Cham language. And if they were forced to eat the pork, they had to follow their instructions. With the non-existence non of their community, Après, and that they had to live mingle là, with the uh, Khmer community, it was easier for them uh, to be a Et subject of a monitoring. Even those few families in uh, the uh, village Même had to be separated according to their age range. They could no longer live as uh, a family, but separated uh, according to their age. Question. Now, sir, you've indicated uh, much earlier in your testimony this morning Monsieur, vous avez dit plus that tôt ce Chams were primarily located que les Chams in Kampong Cham, province, Cham, dans la province de Kampong and Cham. along the Mekong River. Sur les rives du fleuve Mekong. I believe you also indicated that these areas were generally areas that were controlled by the front of the CPK early in the Civil War in the 1970s to the 70s period. Que le PCK, que le front, period. Euh, dont le front avait pris le contrôle tôt so, pendant la guerre civile, um, donc dans la période de 70 à 73. I believe base areas. C'est ce que l'on appelait, je crois, des zones de base. Where the people in these concentrated 
Khmer Rouge communities. Et donc les personnes qui étaient concentrées dans ces communautés Khmer Rouge, Kampong Cham, et le long du Mekong. Other than those from Kopal and Spokane, à part Kopal et Were they Spokane, also relocated, donc, or were they allowed to remain in their home villages? Villageois ont-ils été transférés ou ont-ils gardé le droit de rester dans leur village natal? For Kopal villages, they were relocated to Pumbun in two villages. Eux ont été they were Krabaikri, Kadong, Barai, and Chibagdaik. And uh, they were the subject uh, of malaria. Et as the area was infected with the malaria. La zone était and for those who survived the malaria, they were relocated a second time crossing the river to Stem Trong district. For Swai Klan villagers, after the rebellion, some of them were sent to Lambay district, while the rest were sent across the river to the northern part. That is to Stung Trang district. Dans le district de Stung Trang. And some were even sent to the the area in Kampong Trung province. Dans la province de Kampong Trung, après Prosop, par exemple, dans le district de The same thing for the Cham people who did not involve in the rebellion. Some of them were sent to the northern part. While some remained in the east zone, however, they were relocated to a new district. district. The Cham people were relocated from their districts, and there were only a small number of them who were allowed to remain living in their villages. The majority of them were uh, relocated. La ont été For those who were considered to have a weak tendency and did not seem to oppose against uh, the, the line of the party, the then they would be allowed to remain eux, living in the village. The and the Khmer people were also relocated elsewhere to come and live in their uh, villages. Ou plutôt, des Cambodgiens, des Khmer d'ailleurs ont eux été transférés pour venir vivre dans les villages. Thank you. Um, there's Question. another Merci. quote from Kiernan I would citer like Kiernan to read to you. And um, it is on page 259 in English. In English, the ERN is 011 I, I cannot find the uh, French ERN at the moment. I thought I had it. Okay. It indicates, let me read it to you. It's in his section discussing the southwest zone. And in the first full paragraph, the second sentence, in Anchor Che, À Angkor Chai, the southwest zone chams les chams de la zone sud-ouest ont été officiellement appelés uh, et je vais sure l'appeler car je suis certain de Multan mal Multan Pno M-O-U-L-T-A-N-H One word Donc ça, un And the second word P-H-N-O-E O-E and in parentheses, Kiernan indicates deposity base people. This is the earliest base, known confiés. use of that term Donc, il for de la première It predates the 1975 evacuation of Phnom Penh, whose population became the archetypical et précède l'évacuation de Phnom Penh de 1975, dont la population est devenue l'archétype des confiés. Most significantly, the southwest zone champs were still called de plus deportees, plus les chams even de la after they returned to their home villages in 1974. So, sir, même en 74. in the general decay period classification of new people, base donc, people, 
sous la dans le classement qu'utilisait les Khmer Rouges, le peuple de base, les Cham étaient-ils considérés comme faisant partie du peuple de base Toujours, bien sûr, d'après vos recherches. My uh, research was not uh, that the, the Saraf for the uh, Southwest uh, Je zone as there were only fait de recherche uh, détaillée ou exhaustive dans la zone sud-ouest. Il y a eu une situation de certains Cham qui vivaient, mais je peux vous parler en termes généraux du transfert de Cham. As for the those who uh, Lived in the Donc, cities, there is the Khmer people who live in the cities. Les villes, je parle des Khmer ici, les citadins Khmer ont eux aussi été transférés. And they were labeled as a new people. Et on les a appelés peuple nouveau. The Cham people were also relocated les Cham and aussi ont they été were also labeled. Et on les a as a new aussi people, appelés peuple nouveau, their hometowns, car ils avaient quitté to go and live elsewhere with other people. pour aller vivre avec d'autres personnes ailleurs. So was it the case that Cham people were not considered base, even if they had come from areas that the CPK 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 le front euh, contrôlé depuis 1970. Réponse. We observe that the Cham people of Evacuated, regardless the weather, On a pu voir que les Cham avaient été transférés ou rebellion. évacués. Peu importe leur participation ou non à une révolte euh, qui vivait au district de Kreutzmann. Cela s'est produit ailleurs, à Chlong aussi, Kreutzmann, District et à Kampongsiem. Ils ont tous été évacués. Ils ont évacués de leurs villages pour aller vivre en Mélie. de leur village natal pour aller vivre en Mélie à des Khmer. On a séparé les membres de la même famille. Et pour they did ces not have endroits, sufficient food les to eat, qui avaient été transférés n'avaient pas assez de nourriture à manger car la ration alimentaire était inférieure pour eux que pour ceux du peuple de base. The best people could, uh, Hide some les gens of du the food that they had de base left. pouvaient cacher so une partie de la nourriture qu'ils leur restaient dans une meilleure situation, alors que les Cham ne manquaient de tout, y compris de vêtements. Ils n'avaient pas assez de vêtements à porter. So the condition of the Cham people les everywhere when they were evacuated partout où ils ont été évacués étaient semblables à ce Khmer city dwellers were evacuated from the cities. I myself concluded that the Cham people were in the same condition and they were labeled as a new people, as those of the Khmer people who were evacuated from the cities. Peuple nouveau, tout comme les Khmer qui avaient été évacués des villes. Okay, thank you. Sir, I'm going Merci. to move to a new topic now, Je vais and that is to discuss sujet. with you um, some of the numbers vous, of Cham, the estimates of numbers of the Cham population de la before and after Cham the DK regime. Avant et après le and I want to start by getting Donc, your reaction que vous <coughs> to a quote from Michael Vickery, and this is E367-4.1.7. Excuse me, uh, this document, Your Honors, I've given it an E3 number. Désolé, le document um, n'a pas reçu de cote en E3, est-ce que je sache? I could give you that after the break. Ou a reçu plutôt une cote en E3, se reprend l'interprète, mais je vous la fournirai dans un instant. I don't think I have it with me at the moment. Je ne l'ai pas sous la main. 
in the second paragraph Donc, of that article, Michael Vickery, Vickery Michael says, Vickery, Vickery, all Cambodian plutôt, population statistics of whatever period la population cambodgienne, peu include a large measure of hypothesis, assumption, extrapolation, extrapolation, and guesswork. Et de simple and they may not be adequate et for the type of calculations undertaken by either Kiernan or myself. Retenu, soit par Kiernan ou moi-même. Document, Puis dans un autre um, document. Which you have, your letter to the Phnom Penh Post of 10 March 2006. Post, le 10 mars 2006. Your letter recently admitted it. Qui a été versé au dossier tout récemment par you la Chambre de première instance. Of course, this is a Vous very dit, difficult area of bien research. Bien évidemment, il s'agit de recherches très difficiles car presque tous les chefs des communautés Chan ont été dans le tout les chefs des communautés Chan ont été dans le tout les chefs des communautés Chan ont été dans le tout les chefs des communautés Chan ont été dans le tout les chefs Et in addition to the old avoir, colonial accounts donc, still plus in use données, by scholars, are sorely needed. Il faut faire plus de recherches, so ainsi que de retrouver les chiffres de remontent à l'époque coloniale. Ma question est donc de vous demander de réagir à ce que vous avez dit, ainsi que Michael Vickery, quant aux difficultés pour obtenir des chiffres quant à la population Cham avant et après le Cambodge démocratique. Response. Réponse. Yes, I agreed. Oui, je suis d'accord. That the seeking for the accurate figure is difficult Il est because un we don't exact. have a document or records indicating Car the exact figure of Cham people before the Khmer Rouge. But after the Khmer Rouge, the counting of number by scholars and uh, people like myself, uh, the figure uh, come to uh, 200,000 Cham survivors. So, uh, the problem is uh, the statistic before the Khmer Rouge ce sont les and during the Khmer Rouge, les Khmer Rouge et pendant la période but Khmer Rouge. I relied on uh, interviewee who moi um, saw des or read the statistics, mais que, une que but based on my findings, um, there were 700,000 Cham people uh, before the Khmer Rouge, and uh, the scholars, Ben Kiernan and Vickery, uh, would, you, would base on their documents, the document they found. However, um, if you would uh, like him to, to prove, based on his document, uh, it will be hard for them Mais to prove. Difficile pour eux In my case, I rely on witnesses or cas, my interviewees. Que for example, when the Cham people were evacuated exemple, from the eastern zone to the, zone to the northwest zone, and also from the eastern zone um, of, um, of 50,000 uh, from the east zone, and the remaining, um, the remaining um, charm, uh, there was 100,000. So in, in the uh, eastern zone, there were more than 100,000 charm. So um, there were also other charm people in other uh, sectors and zones. So my uh, figure, as I estimated based on my interviewee, um, there were approximately 700,000 charm people. Question. Now have the E3 numbers, so let me give those. La cote en E3 for the Michael Vickery quote, it is E3 slash 9682. 9682. And for Mr. Osman's Et pour letter, letter to the Trump and Post, de Monsieur Osman, it is E3 slash 9680. Sir, um, 
If I understand correctly, the data that Ben Kiernan Monsieur, and Michael Vickery, si for example, are using, these come from census conducted uh, Kiernan, by French colonial periods during, in fact, the 19th century and from 1962 19e siècle pendant la période government coloniale, census. Et aussi un recensement gouvernemental de 1962, et je pense que Ben Kiernan a eu fait aussi référence à une liste d'électeurs. Avez-vous donc compris que ces données remontent à l'époque coloniale et dépendent aussi d'un recensement mené en 1962 Response. Yes, I read uh, oui. Vickery's books and Lincoln's books. Um, they both rely on uh, census statistics. Um, I would consider how reliable it would be on those statistics. Those who were born um, during 1962 and who, who were born before that and I asked them were there was there any census conducted during the, uh, during that period for young people and no interview no interview could tell me about that including those who uh, were working as a village headman or community chief. De ou de they said, in fact, there were a census conducted, but census, uh, there was no distinction in, term, in, term, in terms of statistic of Cham people or Chinese, Cambodian or other uh, race. This is how I can say um, uh, the reliability of voilà um, their uh, document and their figure, it should be, it, 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 this, it is difficult for me to, to rely on that. Mm. Thank you. Just to documents. correct what I said, I said oui, 19th century, it should be uh, 20th century, uh, as Kiernan and Vickery's article explains, Kiernan relies on a 1930 s'est fondé sur un recensement remontant à 1936. Et on évoque aussi ce recensement de 1962. Ma question est la suivante, et si vous ne savez pas, vous pouvez nous dire, pouvez dire comment l'on a mené ces recensements. Answer. Réponse. In fact, I did not research about any census Je conducted or made during the Khmer Rouge regime. Je pas fait de recherche sur un recensement qui a eu lieu pendant uh, les Correction Khmer before the Khmer Rouge regime. So you mentioned that you did talk to older Chams, and did any of them correction explain avant to you that they Question. recalled the 1962 Donc, census and how it? Took place, Les personnes à qui vous avez parlé vous ont-elles dit qu'elles se souvenaient de ce recensement census. de 1962 ou même celui de 1936 et comment il s'était déroulé Did any of them recall those? S'en souvenait-il For witnesses I interviewed. Um, no one remember or recall those census. Those of uh, those um, who I interview, uh, who were grown up in 1962, and uh, they said that they did not know how a census were conducted ne pas and les there was été no figure of charm people in their area which are published or announced in any uh, media. Uh, they, they could not tell me such thing. 
Do you know, and again, if you don't, you can simply answer no. In these senses, were the interviewees asked simply, what is your nationality? Were they asked, what is your ethnicity? Or were they given choices? Are you Chinese, Khmer, Cham? Do you know how the questions were posed? President, uh, Mr. Expert, uh, please hold on. Um, the Van Council for Kills and Pawn, you may proceed. Yes, I would like to object to the co prosecutor's question. Um, the witness has just explained that none of the people he spoke with uh, remembered a census of any kind. So I do not understand on which basis he would be able to answer the questions put to him because he himself said that he did not research the question nor spoke to people who can speak about uh, this uh, census. So I think the question is not really relevant. Fair enough. I'll move on. It's, uh, I believe, relevant, but obviously I agree, counsel. The witness is not going to know the answer. Sir, you said something at the very beginning of your testimony that interests me. When the president of the court asked you, I forget the exact question, your ethnicity or nationality, I believe you said you were Cham, but your ID card says you are Khmer. So, sir, do Chams in Cambodia, first of all, identify themselves as Cambodians? Uh, response. On my identity card, there's no... There's no mention about uh, my uh, race as charm, but in other documents issued by the current government and um, the information include uh, religion, which indicate um, their religion or the origin of a person, including charm or Chinese Cambodian. And uh, let me uh, refer you to the Sankumri Niyum under Sihan Nuk, and um, um, they were called as uh, Khmer Islam. But uh, the person who created this term was the um, late King Norodom Sihan Nuk. However, uh, this term, uh, Cham or Khmer Islam, um, has not been uh, very popular or uh, keep it its identity. So um, most uh, Cham people will identify as a Cambodian on the ID card. Um, it's like that. Do you know of any reason then that in 1936 or 1962 it would be possible for a Cham person to say they were either Khmer or Kampuchean? President, hold on, expert. Counsel for Mr. Kilsen Pon, Antakize, you may proceed. Yes, Mr. President, I'd like to object to, to the question such as it has been phrased. I don't know if this is a follow-up question on the issue of census, but here he is asking for speculation, so maybe he should put complementary questions in order to justify on which base this question comes into place. So I think the way that the question has been formulated here leads to an objection. Yes, I'm sorry. I'll try to rephrase the question. Yes, Sir, let's, let's stick with the 1960s, a little closer in time. Do you know of any reason why it might be to the advantage 
of a Cham person to say they were Khmai for reasons of prejudice against Chams, for reasons of obtaining an education, for any other reason. Response. For the Cham people themselves, uh, wherever they went, um, they were proud of being Cham people. But what caused us to lose our identity? Um, they were identified as uh, Khmer Islam, which is more popular than Cham now. And uh, sometimes, in some cases, they were identified as a uh, race, they say Cambodian or Khmer. Based on your experience throughout your life, is a Cham person more likely to identify themselves as Cham to a fellow Cham or to someone outside the group? Is there any difference? President, hold on, uh, expert. Um, Council and Takese, you may proceed. Je suis désolé d'interrompre à nouveau, mais là, je suis tardi sur de quelle période on parle. Est-ce qu'on parle de la période actuelle, de la période euh, souci à nous contre 1970 Enfin, avant le coup d'État, est-ce qu'on peut préciser la, la période temporelle Ça me donnera peut-être à éviter les réponses fausses. Fair enough, I think. Sir, in the 1960s, since we have a census in 1962, or in the 1930s, are you aware of any reason why whether Khmer, excuse me, Cham people would be less likely to identify themselves as Cham to outsiders than they would to their own religious leaders, for example? Et plus vraisemblable qu'ils s'identifient à leurs dirigeants religieux. Response. Um, President, please hold on. President, Expert. veuillez attendre. Monsieur um, l'expert. Je vais proceed. Antakise, vous avez la parole. Je, je suis vraiment désolé, mais euh, là, really sorry, si on but, uh, le procureur prend pour référence les deux dates correspondant euh, au recensement, et que M. Euh, Isa Haussmann a expliqué clairement uh, qu'il n'était pas attaché Osman à l'époque des recensements, en gros, on lui demande de parler de choses sur lesquelles il n'a pas was not focusing on the sentences, so we're asking here, therefore, Isa Osman to speak about something that he hasn't researched. So the, the, the foundation of his answer would not be very clear. This only leads to speculation. So if he hasn't worked on the issue, I don't see how he can answer in a very appropriate way. Your Honor, I think I think Council has a point, so I'm going to Je move on to other areas. Dit chose de juste, uh, sir, I'm going to go to your own population estimates. Je reviens maintenant uh, à vos propres estimations You estimated, is it correct, the Cham were about 10 percent of the population of Cambodia in 1975. Is that right? Est-ce que c'est exact? Yes, that is correct. Um, does Your Honor wish me to proceed or do you want to take a break now? Monsieur le Président, souhaitez-vous que je poursuive ou souhaitez-vous passer à la pause? 
President, uh, thank you, President International Co-Prosecutor. It is now appropriate for a short break. We take a break now and resume at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Court officer, please assist the witness uh, during the break time. The expert during the break time I invite him as well as the OCIJ legal officer into the courtroom at 3 o'clock. The court is now in recess.